when we talk about oxalate or high oxalate in the urine, hyperoxaluria, there's really three different types. One is primary hyperoxaluria, and that's due to the body's creating too much oxalate. It's mostly thought to be hepatic or liver driven, and it's part of what's called the endogenous pathway. So those individuals have genetic mutations that caused increased oxalate synthesis by the body. The other type, enteric hyperoxaluria, has to do with the oxalate that, that we take in through our diet. It has nothing to do with what our body's creating, but the oxalate that we take in through our diet getting absorbed more than it should because of fat malabsorption, and that's enteric hyperoxaluria. So it gets absorbed into the blood system and gets excreted out in the kidneys, and they have hyperoxaluria or high oxalate in the urine. And then there's an idiopathic group where we don't actually know what the cause of them having high oxalate in their urine. And so there's three main categories. The major cause of enteric hyperoxaluria is gastric bypass surgery. So ruin why gastric bypass. Other causes include anything that can cause malabsorption in the gut, but can be pancreatic insufficiency, Crohn's disease, other surgeries that have been done to the bowel. So anything that causes malabsorption. Current treatment. So you know, in managing their kidney stones, which is usually how they present, we manage them with increasing their fluid intake. So we're trying to dilute out all those molecules, the calcium and the oxalate from forming stones. In regards to the oxalate, we don't really have any specific treatments to manage the enteric hyperoxaluria, the high oxalate that comes from the gut. What we do is we give calcium supplements in hopes that the calcium can bind to the oxalate in the gut and so that it doesn't actually get absorbed into the bloodstream and doesn't get excreted from the kidneys. And then we do, with the fat malabsorption, we do make a lot of dietary recommendations. So we tell them to decrease the amount of fat that they take in so that they have less fat malabsorption, which is the driving problem that causes the enteric hyperoxia. And we also tell them to lower their oxalate content in their diet. All extremely tough to do. And so we're kind of in this pickle in a lot of ways because we don't have a great treatment and a lot of it is dietary recommendations.